Hey peeps, Matt Fox here. I'm here along the Thomas C. Thomas building, Wilkes Bear. Uh, Wilkes Bear Company is over there. You got the King Storage building, the Planned Parenthood, and then Holy Cross, which is the dorm building for Kings there. These poles are part of the Laurel Line. Now, I was out here because I wanted to see something. Here's the remains of the Thomas C. Thomas Spur and Laurel Line Freight Spur for a couple of the buildings. There's still chunks of things from the Laurel in place. Right here and right there. You can see the rails here. This is the Laurel Line. The track is still here, double track. And then just move over slightly more. Sorry for all the traffic. Here is the Lehigh Valley Canal Branch. Again, still in place. Double tracked partly to serve an industry that was right here. And then removed when this industry was moved during the Conrail and Pocono Northeast era. There isn't all too much to show in this area. I just wanted to show you that. And I'm going across the street to the King's College Act Annex. There's a siding over there, which you can see the building for. Here's where uh, Laurel and the, and the other railroad curved off. That siding was put in either late Lehigh Valley or during the Conrail era. Definitely wasn't Pocono Northeast. Of course, the rails here. I'd love to just tear up this whole parking lot just to see the tracks. Which actually, I think there's more exposed over here. Yeah, bit of mind. I'm just going through. Now these doors here were the freight loading doors for box cars on site. There was a couple of sets of them here, and you can tell where the Laurel Line went. The poles are still in place. Pretty much all the way through the King's Campus itself. Thomas C. Thomas Company, another lower line loading docks. I moved over onto the Lehigh Valley. And it's all it's all here. Foundations of for more of the plants located on site. The Wilkes Bear Company was a steam generation plant for the city of Wilkes Bear steam heat. The stack was for one of the factories that the valley served. And there's a lot of stuff on the ground. And now the stacks are just in the middle of parking. Ooh, there's a nice uh, tractor over there. And of course, Thomas C. Thomas Company loading docks. Another Laurel Line pole over there. More loading dock. And uh, funny enough, historic Thomas C. Thomas cart just sitting there, being used as a mobile workbench. Been in a couple box cars. But right here, the right of way of the Lehigh Valley and the Laurel Line. Just buried here. Could you imagine just unearthing it? and restoring it to service, which would be difficult, but it would definitely make an interesting corridor. A really neat four-track yard, which wilkes Bard currently doesn't even have a yard. Yeah. So I'm going over the street, and I'll show you a bit of the Laurel Line. Or not the Laurel Line. The uh, spur. Picking up now on the other side. You can see this is the remains of a structure that was here once, I don't know what, but there is a piece of mine rail there, so maybe one of these days I could convince them to hand it over. There's also a piece of regular rail here, left, a little bit curved worn, but not too bad a shape. Lots of garbage thrown here in the woods. It'd be neat to come back in the winter time when all the plants are really dead. Of course, as you can see, the spur that broke off and went on to the act, you know, annex. Not a lot left. As you can tell, Laurel Line and Leah Valley curved here. There's a photo of a Erie Lackawanna S2, probably former Erie, 
coming down the track. Ah, oh, spike. Nice. Yeah, just a simple industrial spur. Wasn't connected any power or anything, because why would you on this section? The fact that there's still ties and, well, remains of ties in that, it's incredible. The fact that there's anything incredible. See on the hill, that's where the Lehigh Valley is. There's remains of telegraph poles in that there. And I'm gonna walk along this a little bit, but not in the ground. This parking lot section, definitely Conrail era during Conrail, Pocono Northeast. But the rest, no. Well, that's interesting. Walking out over. Huh. There was something here. I don't know what, but there was. There's the Lehigh Valley. Stone wall built back in the 1800s. Looks like there's a concrete fence post too, or just a parking thing. I don't know, I'll find out eventually. Yeah, track's pretty rough, buried, but still, you can still run a piece of equipment down this. Not too bad. Loading area, ties, spikes. Wow, there is still, there's plates. I've never seen plates so tiny, but there's plates. Yeah. Very interesting stuff. I'd like to recover this one of these days. Maybe even pull out a tie plate if I can. I need to find out who owns the property. Plinker. Yeah, I'm just looking around. Don't worry. I want to make this video just because I was here in the area. And also, you know, no one's seen this really. No one pays attention. I saw some snakes earlier, so I'm watching Furley go for hole. These are some old ties. Yeah, this line. They really didn't maintain this considering what went down. But the rails still go. They're still going. Even under this section of pavement, which should be milled. Just going along, this is the back of the North Pennsylvania Avenue building. This is part of King's College, so it's all good. And I just want to see how far the spur actually goes still. Because it goes for a bit more of a ways from the back of the, lo of the former warehouse. As you imagine, a boxcar being unloaded here. And we're also near the track, so I'll, I'll get some film of that. There is some neat stuff, which uh, I plan on showing you around here. Now, this building actually is in the way of a construction project this, the city wants to do, too, which is ironic. And yeah, this spur, it's more buried here, partly removed. But I'm just following it to the end because you can still actually see where it's poking out of the concrete. It's making a crease which that's what I like. I was wondered, well, here you can actually tell this is a newer storm drain that was put in, which is fantastic to actually see. And the, the college and the previous owners are making good effort in maintaining the infrastructure. As you can see, I'm going right to the end of the building because there's still loading doors. Although they probably didn't load this far away. Still nice too. It's my exercise. There's also a structure coming up for the railroad, which we'll take a quick gander at since we're here. This is gonna be, well, I still have to post the Honesdale work video as of recording this. I'm gonna post that tonight, or uh, I keep saying things. I'll post that before I post this video. This is gonna be like my abandoned exploration. Now this is under the Lehigh Valley. I have no clue what the building is for or does. Although I'm just gonna take a quick peek up close at it. What remains 
when doubt some homeless guy was living back here for a while. Oh, there's metal in there and definitely snakes. Yeah. But the Lehigh Valley decided to construct part of the railroad over the city high, at a higher elevation. So you have like this hump going through part of the town. And that was partly for grade crossing elimination, partly for other reasons. Original stone. And that was done in the 1800s. As you can see, it's not in the best shape being under LNS control. But they do a pretty. It still looks pretty nice for what it is. Of course, we're talking canal era construction. This is one of the underpasses to the Scott Street Yard. Scott Street is right there, as a point of reference. Uh, this underpass is one of two. And as you can see, Partly uh, fenced off. Well, it's got walking gates there. I don't know the full details of this structure. So, don't quote me. That goes right the way through under the tracks. I am too scared to look further. That's just filled to the broom with garbage. Anyways. That structure is pretty nice. Telegraph pole, another telegraph pole, still in place. And you can see the track bed up there. And also, these rails lower down, which were probably removed, but never removed. They're building a bit of a wall up there, but it's also collapsed. And as you know, this is the four track Lehigh Valley main. But yeah, and the, of course the abutments, it used to be much wider, but now it's not. Car loading, which again, if the generator wasn't there and that, it would have been pretty neat to see it the way it used to be. And I'm just gonna stay up close to this because again, it's gonna be a long video. More rail, another rail just sitting here on its side and another piece of metal which or brick i'll come back for eventually take a look at just building up trash here but anyways yeah that's it for the video i just wanted to take a look around maybe find out who owns the building here probably the college probably not it would make sense if they acquired it with this building and yeah hey Maybe if I get a speeder or a hand car, I'll try to clear the rails a bit and maybe we could try running up and down a sliver of the line. This section, of course, is going to be much harder. The rails are pretty worn out, although for if I were ever to take them for one, I mean nine, if they wanted to redo the parking lot, then they'll be perfect in their condition especially because of the exposed ties that means it's especially the rail over here it's partly buried but it's not in too bad of shape but yeah that's all for this video of matt randomly walking around talking about stuff while looking at train stuff somewhere in the middle of nowhere pennsylvania like comment and subscribe and i'll see you all next time take care